Hey everyone and welcome to our Shadowlands Melee Roundup where we're going to do just that. We're going to give you basically the gist of every melee spec in the game for Shadowlands, including how they feel to play, a look at their core changes, plus the legendaries. All of course with the goal to help you make your choice for this expansion. Now, covenants are something you will choose after you select your spec and your class so they don't impact this video. Here is something though that will impact your life with Skillshare, today's sponsor and where the first thousand of you to click my link down below will get a free trial and it's just 10 bucks a month after that. Now, it's time for something different. Investing 101 with Business Casual. You've probably heard a lot about stonks this year. What with Wall Street bets going wild, all the Tesla talk, all of that stuff. Well, the thing is, Investing is actually really important for your future. It's a way to turn your labor into a long-term wealth, which is super important as you age. Um, but it's something that's got to be done carefully with a lot of understanding. And that's where Investing 101 stock market and stocks are two incredible series to watch. The reason why is that Jordan makes it simple and accessible so you actually understand the jargon, all of that stuff. It's helping to combat the knowledge gap that prevents people from accessing investing. Through each of these two, you will learn everything you need to know to actually make informed, responsible decisions that you actually understand from a fundamental level instead of just seeing some stock tip and blindly going for it. So. Give this one a shot. It is getting important information out there and you can do it for free if you click my link down below and then it's just 10 bucks a month after that for everything on Skillshare, which is a lot. A big thank you to them for sponsoring the channel and let's get into the video. Look, Havoc is still very much Havoc, still being the easiest spec to play in the game by default. All your abilities still operate as you would expect, but there are a few changes. I mean, the most clear one is Immolation Aura being baseline. That's pretty cool, gives you a little bit more to play with by default. That said, if you wanted to generate even more fury, then you'll still need to talent it, so it does take up a talent slot. Now that said, speaking of talents, there is quite a bit of change actually. So Nemesis is gone, it's been removed. Fel Barrage is now in the final talent row, and uh, well, there's a new one, Glaive Tempest, that is in the place of where Fel Barrage used to be. And Glaive Tempest is basically a weaker version of your Legion artifact weapon ability. Then of course, Essence Break is a new talent that replaces Dark Slash. It works similar to Dark Slash, but it's now an untargeted frontal cleave, and it increases the damage uh, that those enemies take from your Blade Dance and your Chaos Strike. And that basically means it's far more playable, and it's actually quite a bit of fun to play with as well. There's then also Unbound Chaos. It's another fun talent, a bit less cool because they changed it to just be a flat damage increase to your Fell Rush after you do an Immolation Ore instead of like a demon popping down, but it's actually a pretty neat way to play. And then if you combine that with Momentum, which is on the final row now, you sure do have a more involved, jumpy, around the place play style. Now that said, it's not all rosy because survivability is lower than it was in BFA, and they've also they've done us a bit dirty and they've reduced the duration of Demonic by two seconds. And that means that if you choose Blind Fury, then you can't fit a second Annihilation into your Metamorphosis window, which does not feel satisfying, so boo to that. But there you go. Basically, it's tweaks and a few additions. It still very much is Havoc, though. So, what about the new hotness? What about the legendaries? Are they fun? Well, so to go through the spec-specific ones, Burning Wound is kind of just free damage, so it's a bit boring. Chaos Theory, though, does give you uh, basically a chance of your buffed Chaos Strikes, um, and it also increases their Fury refund rate. So that could be quite neat, especially if you maybe combine that further with, uh, you know, Insatiable Hunger, Demonic Appetite, and either um, Cycle of Hatred or Essence Break. Just stuff that doubles down on your Chaos Strike. So could be kind of neat as a thing to react to. Then Darker Nature is only on killing enemies. Basically, when you kill an enemy, you get a Demon Soul. And if you, uh, when you, of course, you consume a Demon Soul, that gives you a 20% damage buff, so depending on the type of fight, that could be quite fun to play around with. There's then Erratic Felcor, which uh, basically, right, that'll be a godsend for people who love momentum builds, so that could be quite fun. Oh, and then also, just one of their general uh, shared legendaries for the class. It gives I-Beam a 20% chance not to incur its cooldown, so... You know, roll that, uh, roll that 20% chance maybe three times in a row and you'll just be I-Beaming like mad, which, uh, yeah, kinda neat, I guess. Overall, though, what's the situation? Well, look, Havoc is Havoc. The demonic change, being down to six seconds, stings a little bit. The survivability is not as great, but 
there are, I think, improvements, and the legendaries are decent enough. I do not think this will be enough to convert new people to this spec, but overall, it is a simple enough uh, and pretty solid DPS spec in the game. Windwalker may still have to deal with Storm Earth and Fire bugging out a bit, but they do get a few changes. Not many, though, so this spec still is going to feel very similar with its usual rhythm of not breaking its mastery and prioritizing, of course, Fists of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, and Dragon Punch if you talent into that. So what's new? Well, you get Zhuan by uh, baseline now, so you just have, have him as a cooldown. Um, so that gives you another cooldown. And then Storm Earth and Fire, uh, Energizing Elixir, and Serenity are all off the global cooldown. So that feels a lot better. Also, Fortifying Brew. That's now baseline for you, which is pretty sweet. And uh, with that said, we're kind of running out of changes. Now, if you go to the talents, you've got Dance of Chi Chi. That's a new talent that means that spending uh, Chi has got a chance to make your next spinning cr uh, crane kick free and do 200% more damage. So you could use that in single target to, of course, do some damage, but also uh, it'll help you maintain your combo by, you know, allowing you to do a blackout kick, then use that, then another blackout kick. So it's a kind of a nice tweak of pace, I guess, a thing to react to. Then Touch of Death is back to its old instant kill if your enemy's got less health than you design, which is pretty fun, um, but that's only for weak enemies. For stronger ones, it just does 35% of your health pool as damage. Then, if you're Windwalker, it has a new effect where it'll spawn three Chi Orbs for you. And that is kind of cool, but honestly, I mean, the one thing that I've learned, especially after a lot of scaling happens, playing one of these in, you know, in Legion, is you get to the point where you're actually, you get so much Chi, it's sort of hard to get rid of it all without breaking your combo. So, yeah, not 100% sure if that's the most fun thing they could have done with that effect. But look, overall... Windwalker is Windwalker. It's a solid spec. It's had some nice things baseline. The GCD change is good. It is sometimes hurt by a few like bugs and scaling, and it generally is a spec that has shined more in Mythic Plus. Uh, that was the situation for a long time. I think it still is. What about the legendaries then? Well, Jade Ignition is kind of cool. Basically, right, when your fists are furying damage, it uh, gr grants you an extra resource. That resource can stack up to 30, and what that resource does is it powers up your spinning crane kick. So it's another little thing for you to actually think about and keep in mind. That, of course, could, uh, you know, synergize decently well with talents. I think it's pretty cool. There's uh, Kiefer's Skyreach, which is kind of wild. It gives Tiger Pam a 10-yard range uh, charge effect and a big six-second damage buff that can happen every minute per target. So you could do real work with that in a target switching scenario. Pretty neat. Then Last Emperor's Capacitor feels like, uh, basically it feels like Earthshock. <laughs> so, you know, you generate um, you generate stacks of its buff, um, and then eventually you put that into a really big crackling uh, Jade Lightning. So kind of cool. Get your Emperor, uh, you know, Palpatine on. Then moving past that, there's Yuan's Battle Gear, which basically brings back our tier 20 set, adding a damage uh, reinforcement forcing and cooldown reduction interplay between Fists of Fury and Rising Sun Kick. Overall, gotta say, for the spec-specific legendaries, I like them quite a bit for Windwalker. Now, the general ones are not really of massive note, but there is one that gives you 33% haste after summoning your Celestial. So essentially, it means that Zhuan will give you a mini Bloodlust, which is kind of cool. And then another one gives you a touch of death up every minute. So that could be pretty fun in some sorts of, uh, some sorts of content. Overall, I would say then, Windwalker is a pretty solid pick. I think especially it just has a kit that feels really at home in Mythic Plus, um, but it still is Windwalker. So if you're not already convinced, I don't know if this is doing anything fundamental to really bring you forward. But certainly, if you're a dedicated Windwalker player, you will have a few cool new Legos and things like that to play around with. Okay, next up it's Feral, and honestly, Feral is one that I just think is a little bit troubled. Now, I'll be real with you, the core of it still feels fine. I mean, snapshotting dots with Tiger's Fury while, you know, managing your incoming energy and your combo points, that's a solid core of a spec, right? It's just that there's not much fun for me past that, even though there can be a lot of effort into doing this all well. The new Blood Talons uh, talent, it's been changed now such that it triggers after doing three generators in short order, and I just don't really like the rhythm of that. I actually don't find that fitting that new Blood Talons into the pace of doing everything else is, is fun. I can't do it when I keep attention, but it's just not that fun to be honest with you. Um, you know, I could just suck. I'm willing to say that, but this basically, especially with the Blood Talons, ends up being a form of spinning plates that just doesn't, you know, doesn't get me going, to be honest with you, even though I normally quite like multi-dotting. 
There is one great change though, I will give them this, and that is that um, basically the impactful gameplay from the talented version of Berserk is now baseline. And that does make that just a spec more engaging to play by default. There's also some other nice things. Heart of the Wild, of course, is there, so you'll be able to save people's ass by, uh, you know, of course, doubling down your affinity choice. That's pretty cool. And the unpruning has just generally been quite nice. And also, Sabretooth has been nerfed to be a bit less dominant. It basically made single target mind-numbingly boring, so that's fixed. Overall, then, I'll say this. If you don't like the new Blood Talons, or you don't want to use it, and you're still fine with playing the rest of this spec, then it will be an improvement over the past, just not massively so. There's no hype new reason to play the Feral Druid. Now, I will say, historically, Feral is also a class that's been a bit more involved to play, but hasn't really been rewarded for the fiddliness of that rotation, so I would actually bear that in mind. Now, when we go over to the spec-specific legendaries, Basically what they do is they all tend to increase pace. One makes regenerators reduce the cooldown of Berserk and make it stronger. Another one makes Tiger's Fury cause your next two finishers to regen two combo points. Another one then uh, causes clearcasted abilities to generate 25% of their energy and it increases your energy cap by 60. Um, while another one then makes your rip ticks have a chance to give you a free instant ferocious bite. Now, I'm gonna be real with you. I think that actually is all pretty good stuff. And the times where I do like Feral is when I have more haste and the pace is faster. So certainly I'd say that the basics of this, especially in a patch or two when you can use two legendaries, I actually think that would be quite fun, but that's not really a reason to go for it. So yeah, I actually think that these are pretty good um, legendaries. I like how there's like a few flavors of speed increase out there. Now the general ones are also interesting, which is kind of impressive. So one of them makes dots do their damage faster. And that does mean more dot applications, and that does change up their playstyle a little bit. Now, the others are then a bit more utility-based and are less interactive, so overall I'll say this, it is a decent selection. But still, I find it hard to recommend this one personally, even though I will say that the spec fantasy and the class fantasy are really well done. I just would have liked more change for Feral. Now, if you thought Feral needed more change, just wait for survival, because their change log is minuscule, and I don't think it's because Blizzard thinks it's a perfectly ideal spec in where it is. Now, it does seem like just not that many people actually gravitated to Blizzard's Melee Hunter redesign, and I think that means they've just put less effort into it. I mean, look, you have new baseline abilities and Kill Shot, that's pretty cool, and Arcane Shot, which really isn't that useful for them, but, I mean, mo like, so many of their changes are just applying the target cap, right? Blizzard have basically done not much at all with them. There is really no new goodies, so it still is that situation of a very, very, very basic rotation without talents, and the same old talents. Some of them are cool, some of them are pretty simple, but that's it. It does feel a bit bare bones. So, can legendaries save it and make it more exciting? Well, Butcher's Bone Fragments makes your core spenders increase the damage of your next AoE spender, stacking up to six times, so that's pretty okay. It's a little thing to keep in mind. Latent Poison Injectors doesn't actually really change how you play that much, I think, so it feels a little bit pointless. And the same goes for Wildfire Cluster, um, and that makes sense, because those are just copied over Azerite traits. There's <sighs> not much here, is there? I will say at least Rylak Stalker's Confounding Strikes gives you a cooldown reset of Wildfire Bomb to maybe spice up your rotation a bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of it. Now I will say the general hunter legendaries have got a few highlights and I think that makes sense because the other hunters, well, they will be played a lot more. So one of them is pretty cool in that you um, can put a flare into a tar trap and make it explode. That's pretty neat. Another one gives you a big, uh, basically big focus gains whenever you're trapping, which could double down and using traps for gameplay. And uh, the others are uh, just a bit boring, like buffing Vein Death and reducing the cooldown of Coordinated Strike. Overall, gonna say, or coordinated assaults, gonna say this. Blizzard phoned it in here. Absolutely phoned it in. And I do get why. Because very few people played this spec. I think Blizzard realized they had bigger fish to fry elsewhere, and they just couldn't give this one the effort because other things needed it more. I think that does make sense, even though it is a bit unfortunate. And speaking of that redirected effort, well, Enhancement did get a revamp. It's totally different to play now. 
It can get a little crowded though. So this is not one for people who like lots and lots of cooldown management or like just little, little gameplay loops within gameplay loops for what they're playing. But if you do like those things, then this spec really does double down on it. So for the basics, gone is the Maelstrom bar and the builder spender gameplay that define them during the Legion and BFA expansions. Now, to be clear with you, your base gameplay is still using Lava Lash and Storm Strike on cooldown, doing your Storm Strike procs, keeping up your Flame Shock, maybe doing some single target filler with Frost Shock if Flame Shock's already up, and of course then dealing with their new mechanic, Maelstrom Weapon. So this is a mechanic where melee damage gives you a chance to generate a Maelstrom Weapon stack. Now, each Maelstrom Weapon stack will increase the power and decrease the cast time of your next spell by 20%. So normally there you'd wait until you get five stacks, which means you get an instant cast, and you use that on uh, Lightning Bolt for single target, Chain Lightning for AoE, but also you could use a heal, or you could instantly use one of your talents, like Elemental Blast, or Stormkeeper, which is now one of their talents. And overall, I think it's a really good addition. Now, of course, that said, older just points of coolness remain. I mean, the Crash Lightning-based AoE just feels awesome. That's still there. It's pretty cool. Also, your elemental spirit wolves uh, actually impact your gameplay a little bit more, depending on the wolves you get, which is pretty nice. And you do have some old school flavor, which some people will just find to be busy work. And that is things like enchanting your weapons, dropping your wind fury totem. And generally, one thing they do have is they benefit from the unpruning a bit. Now, talents are generally better and they do fit into enhancement well. That said, if you go for too many active talents, then you will have just a rather crowded gameplay style. But there are some cool choices here. I mean, Hailstorm is, is one. It gives you a bit more Frost Shock gameplay if you want that. There's Fire Nova, which will explode all of your, um, you know, your dotted targets, which is pretty cool. So overall, I think this is not going to be a win for everyone, but I think for a lot of enha um, enhancement shamans, this is going to be a success. What then about legendaries? Well, Doomwinds, your old artifact ability, is back, but it's now tied to dropping your Wind Fury totem, so that's kind of neat. Next, Legacy of the Frost Witch causes five stack Maelstrom weapon usage, which is really when you're going to be using it anyway, to reset the cooldown of Storm Strike. So that's a bit of a pace increase, it's a bit more of an interaction, it gives it some more rhythm if you want it, pretty cool. Uh, then Primal Lava Actuators just uh, doubles down on Lava Lash, basically making it uh, faster and uh, stronger based on your Flame Shock ticks. So that's pretty cool. And uh, finally, Witch Doctor's Wolf Bones speeds up Maelstrom Weapon um, a bit and uh, reduces the cooldown of Feral Spirit. So yeah, kind of fine. Some of these are pretty fun, I would say. Um, then if you move over to the general Shaman ones, they're pretty decent too. One of them gives Storm Strike a chance to activate Ascendance for six seconds, so that is another way your gameplay could be spiced up. Another one gives your Earth Elemental a Perma Earthquake for a bit more AoE, and uh, another is a bit odd. Adding a mutual chain, or well, basically a mutual buffing uh, relationship between Chain Lightning and Chain Heal, so that's an odd one to play with. And then finally, this is a bit wild. One of them gives you an extra 20 seconds for heroism and an extra 10% haste. So that's kind of bonkers. Overall, I think you have the picture here. If you want a whole bunch of buttons, a whole bunch of cooldowns, a whole bunch of little things to pay attention to within your spec, then this is probably going to be a good one for you. And if that all seems like it's too much, maybe a bit too stressful, then you could play a more passive talent build of this, but it's probably going to be less for you. Retribution, okay, get hype, it's in a great place. It wasn't that bad in BFA, but it was maybe a touch too simple. Pressing three or four buttons on cooldown to build holy power and then spending it on either a single target or an AoE, I mean, not exactly exciting. But thankfully, with some talent changes, you can have your cake and eat it too. And that's great, because Rhett has both Wake of Ashes and Hammer of Wrath baseline. They're not talents anymore. So now the default build from BFA is actually just the default. And uh, of course, there's now room for some more talents to spice it up. So for an example of that, Seraphim or Holy Avenger and uh, the new Final Reckoning and the revamped Execution Sentence together makes for a really, just a really cool burst window every minute that kind of pushes you to get it right. So if you want more synergies and, you know, getting it all right, you could do that. You can still opt for a more passive build if that's to your taste, but it no longer feels like there's talents that you need for your gameplay to feel complete because of the baselining of, uh, of course, Wake of Ashes and Hammer of Wrath. That's awesome. And what's great here is this was already a great spec and it now just feels like a better version of its former self. 
awesome. They also have got more utility now that they've got access to the blessing or to blessing of sacrifice and uh, the range of auras. So that's pretty cool. They also have an extra option to heal now. The Word of Glory is baseline as a single target heal. And uh, there's also a talent to boost its healing on low health targets if you want to be helping out a little bit. Then Rhett's Legendaries in the same vein are also sweet. This is such a good deal. <laughs> There's Final Verdict, which gives Templar's Verdict the visual and sound from Warlords of Draenor back. That's kind of neat. Uh, while, of course, giving it a 15% chance to reset and activate Hammer of Wrath. That's always a nice little, just, you know, sort of proc to, uh, proc to react to. Then we've got Vanguard's Momentum. That gives Hammer of Wrath an extra charge and a stacking damage buff. So, uh, so it buffs wings and the execute phase. Pretty awesome. There's also then the Projectile Divine Storm Artifact trait and, and the Haste Stacking Relentless Inquisitor Azerite trait back as their own legendaries. To be pretty simple here, the takeaway is, is easy. It's good job, Blizzard. They did a good job here. Rhett wasn't bad. Its talents were a bit scuffed. Now they're better. And Rhett is just unbelievably solid and well-rounded. If, of course, being a bit slow to get around the place. Shadowlands sharpens up arms a little, most notably in their mastery, uh, which now, in addition to bleeding enemies out, makes it so that hitting them with any of arms' big abilities grants a 12 second window of increased damage. So uh, that's kind of it for core changes outside of sweeping strikes as GCD now being cut in half, which uh, it's actually pretty cool to play with. The game can do with a bit more varied pacing. Of course, remember sweeping strikes, um, you know, when you use it, it's, it's also an attack. So that actually feels quite good to use. Now, as for the talent changes, because yes, that really is, is us done with the core changes. As for the talents, Rend lasts longer and increases crit damage taken. Cleave now replaces sweeping strikes, consumes over power charges, and applies deep wounds. Then Deadly Cam now increases max range and removes the cost of the next four abilities instead of uh, just removing it for a fixed time. So it gives you a bit more flexibility in usage. And then Dreadnought grants you um, two over power charges and gives it the seismic wave artifact uh, trait, or Azerite trait even, so pretty cool. Um, but still, most of the time, the gameplay of this is what you'd expect. You're keeping your abilities on cooldown, and you're waiting for rage. Arms still is arms, so you kind of know what you're getting into. Now, legendaries do mitigate this a little bit by giving you some dynamic procs to, pro uh, to play around with. So, uh, Battle Lord gives Slam a 40% chance to reset Mortal Strike. Pretty high chance, so that's one sort of mode of gameplay. There's Enduring Blow, which gives Mortal Strike a chance to apply Colossus Smash. They've also got um, their Execute Mortal Strike buff back from Legion as a Lego, but only a fraction is strong. So that's the highlights there. Ultimately, look, Arms Warriors could be doing with, I think, just a bit more buttons to um, sort of build up to their high points. Now, if you were to, you know, in a patch or two, uh, let us wear two legendaries, and maybe you could combine some effects, then it could start to feel a bit better. Um, so it's that sort of thing where, look, it's not bad if you want a more relaxed warrior experience than Fury, which is a lot more fast-paced, but it certainly is the less thrilling option. So that's the situation with arms. <laughs> Next up, Fury, which has only seen a few changes, but does have a pretty darn different talent tree and mostly improved. So this spec is still about prioritizing getting into Enrage and then maximizing the damage you do while you are enraged. There are now, though, a few different talent builds worth taking rather than just one or two cookie cutter options. So Fresh Meat now grants a guaranteed enrage on hitting a new enemy. There's a new Onslaught button only usable during enrage and a Haste buff that stacks up to 9% if you keep rampaging the same target. There's Cruelty, which upgrades Raging Blow to do more damage and to reset more, and Seethe, which uh, gives Bloodthirst more rage. Recklessness gives rage by default now, and it's off the global cooldown, which really does feel better. Now, Reckless Abandon still does give it more rage, right? And also upgrades Bloodthirst to have a lower cooldown and uh, Raging Blow uh, with a 10 yard ch uh, charge. So that's also pretty sweet. Um, it actually just feels real good, right? The talent choices that are, that are here within the tree. So I would say 
in a fundamental, like, fun design and gameplay space, Fury is starting off in a really good place with Shadowlands. Now, they also get something they've wanted for a long time as well, and that is Single-Minded Fury, where you can now dual-wield one-handers. You will get a damage bonus to offset the stat loss and a 5% movement speed buff because, uh, well, I guess it's one-handers. They're lighter. Also, like arms, they've been unpruned, and that means they get the likes of Shattering Throw and Ignore Pain, which is real nice to have. Now, for Legendaries, they actually see a lot of old favorites, so there will be some excitement here. The Bloodthirst Stacking Damage Legendary is back, but instead it stacks Haste. Uh, Deathmaker gives Rampage a 20% chance to apply Siege Breaker, which could be a fun thing to react to. Then Reckless Defense gives Rampage a chance to reduce the Recklessness and uh, Enrage regen cooldowns, and Will of the Berserkers gives you a big crit buff whenever Recklessness expires, and that's one that can then be refreshed with Raging Blow. There's a lot of choice here, like with the talents, and overall this is what I'd say. This is just more solid execution from Blizzard. Fury basically just feels improved from its previous baseline, which was already pretty good. I don't think it's to the same extent as, say, with the Red Paladins, but it's a similar situation where you take a spec that's pretty good, you just make it better, and there you go. Everyone's happy. Okay, Frost Death Knight, it has seen limited but good changes. Look, it's Frost. It still is about managing your runes and your runic power while reacting to your procs, but it's got a Frost Room's Fury baseline, which is pretty fun, and a new runic power cost-reducing talent, Hypothermic Presence. So there's that in terms of new toys. Now, the biggest change for some is the ability to use two-handed weapons, although some talents like Ice Cap and Frozen Pulse actually do scale better when you're dual wielding, so that could affect the balance. Now, for anybody hoping to see the end of Sindragosa, nah, Breath of Sindragosa could still be dominant, but if it's not your thing, you should still be able to run Ice Cap instead and be perfectly fine most of the time. Now, another good thing here, and this is just, man, why do they do it in BFA, but one of the more frustrating things about Frost is fixed. Pillar of Frost and Empowered Rune Weapon are off the global cooldown. Yes, it does feel a lot better playing with those off the GCD. In terms of other things, look, they've got some new rune forges, but being realistic, Fallen Crusader and Razor Eyes are still going to be the best for pure DPS, so it's what people will use. Then in terms of other stuff, I mean, you do have very useful things back with Anti-Magic Zone and Raise Dead with Sacrificial Pact being things you can do now, so that's pretty cool. Now, for the legendaries, it does have some nice options, but nothing huge. Now, one of them just halves the cooldown of Frostworm's Fury. It's a pretty fun ability to use, so that's cool. Kultira's uh, Favor will increase Obliterate's damage and give it a 12% chance to refund both runes. Um, and all except the Frostworm legendary are, um, I mean, they're basically just based around slight damage increases or more procs slash resources, so... It's just going to be a matter of what flavor of more procs and resources do you actually, well, you know, what's best mathematically, or what do you think is the most fun to play around with, be it in single target or in AoE. All in all, then, it's really not that much change, but Frost is in a better situation than it used to be. For me, a large part of that is just the stuff being off the GCD. Unholy was the Death Knight's darling spec throughout BFA. Some of that was the faster might Azerite trait, resulting in some uh, degenerate gameplay, you could say. But uh, really, most of that was, it was just a pretty complete feeling spec that had its fun and it stood out. It was different and unique, and I really like that. It had a lot of tinkering during the bait of Shadowlands, and it fundamentally is better for it. It's, you know, it is the same melee necromancer, right? It's still all about setting up and bursting your wounds while managing your runes and your runic power. Um, but in Shadowlands, it has its AoE spender, Epidemic Baseline. Finally. Uh, but Outbreak has been reworked to require a bit more management. It used to spread its dot every second for six seconds, but now it only spreads it once. And that does mean that keeping up Virulent Plague in all targets uh, is just going to be a more active part of your gameplay. Then another important change for them is the distribution of damage. So their mastery now also increases minion damage done substantially, so I suppose it just doubles down a little bit more numerically on the necromancer sort of vibe that they've got going on. Now, as for talents, well, Unholy Blight now stacks, uh, spreads Virulent Plague, and adds a pet damage increase for the duration. Soul Reaper is actually something that's been returned to its old execute functionality, and Unholy Frenzy is now Unholy Assault, so that's different. It is now an attack that applies four wounds and grants haste, instead of just being a buff. A buff that, of course, didn't feel that good to use because it, of course, invoked the global cooldown. 
Then also Apocalypse has been reduced to a 75 second CD. So overall here, what's our takeaway? Well, basically they're a bit more necromantic. They're a bit more involved to play. I think that's generally pretty good stuff. Again, it's basically just taking a pretty solid spec and giving it a little bit more improvement. Um, that said, if you've been make, uh, paying attention to Alpha and Beta, do keep in mind at one point they did get Summon Gargoyle baseline, but they have since reverted that, so you will not get that baseline. So Deadliest Coil gives them their old tier bonus back, reducing the cost of Death Coil and letting it add to the Dark Transformation duration. Then Frenzied Monstrosity gives uh, Dark Transformation a 12% attack speed and damage buff uh, for both you and your buffed ghoul. Uh, Death's Certainty gives Death Coil and Strike extra damage and some nice death and decay cooldown reduction, which is interesting to me because then I have to wonder, would that be very strong for the Night Fae Death Knights given what their, uh, you know, the Night Fae ability is? Um, you know, that will add some uptime to the already very strong death Jew. But anyway, here's the core. Unholy is a bit better. It was a really good spec. It really just does nail that melee necromancer fantasy and they've made a few targeted improvements. Assassination got a light touch of changes. I think Blizzard just thinks it works pretty well as like the entry level rogue. Now there is one new thing to um, have in your upkeep and that is the buff slice and dice. So you'll be upkeeping that and then doing the usual things, keeping up Rupture and keeping up Garrot while trying to fit as many in Venoms as is possible during your shiv window. So that's what you're going to be doing at the core. Now this does get a bit more complicated when you're working in Vanish, but overall, it's a fairly simple spec on average. It's one I've generally enjoyed, to be honest with you. Now, the simplicity is alleviated somewhat now that, of course, Slice and Dice and uh, Toxic Blade are baseline. So Toxic Blade, right, which was a talent, that's been rolled into Shiv for Assassination, and Shiv is now baseline for all of the rogues, but of course, is much more important for Assassination. And it does feel pretty good to you, so thumbs up for that. Then Alacrity is the uh, talent taking the place of Toxic Blade, um, ambush is back and blindsight interacts with it for some execute functionality. But that's basically it, right? It's mostly just, uh, you know, rebalanced. So for the existing assassination players, the only new thing you've really got to think about is slice and dice. Um, it's basically up to you as to whether you would or would not like that addition to your gameplay. It's a thing you've got to do. Um, overall, I'd say I think it's a pretty fun spec to play, but the lack of changes for talents and stuff like that isn't particularly exciting. They'll probably just find a cookie cutter build and that will be that. Now that said, in the legendary front, they're, they're okay passives that aren't that transformative. Uh, one of them increases poison crit chance with those crits refunding energy during Envenom. So, you know, it gives you a bit of a speed boost, which I think is pretty fun. Um, another adds a bleed to mutilate and increases Envenom damage per bleed. A Third will increase poison and bleed damage to targets below 30% health, and the last reduces Vendetta's cooldown and based on the energy that you spent. Now what's interesting is the most impactful of them is actually one of the shared rogue legendaries, and that is Tiny Toxic Blades. That removes Shiv's energy cost and increases its damage. All in all, it's not that much better than BFA being real with you, and that is a bit disappointing, but look, it is still a fun enough entry-level rogue if you don't mind being a bit bored on single target. Okay, Outlaw has got a shake-up in the name of addressing Roll the Bones. And it's a very blizzardy move, so not everyone will like it. Uh, Roll the Bones is now a cooldown that does not cost combo points. And that basically means no more re-rolling for you. You're just going to have to stick with what you've got when you roll the bones. Then, of course, there's another big change. Between the Eyes is now part of your damage rotation because it grants extra crit chance for a short time instead of providing a stun, so it's a regular rotational ability now. Then, uh, like with the other rogues, of course, Slice and Dice is a new thing that's baseline and you'll just need to maintain that. Now, to keep things a bit more exciting, uh, Restless Blades now reduces the cooldown of Roll the Bones and Blade Flurry. Uh, this will mean that you'll have a little bit more choice of when to roll, right? Because you could roll ASAP. Um, you know, to re-roll the remainder of a bad roll of bones based on that, or you could wait until, uh, you know, a good one is fully expired. They then also, and I think this is fun, they've got their artifact ability back. Yep, Dreadblades is back. It fills your combo points with every generator, but finishers cost you 5% HP. I've always loved the pace of that one. Um, so basically, right, the RNG nightmare of roll of bones was definitely worth addressing for Blizzard, okay? I do think that was the case. But maybe just limiting its use to a cooldown may not have been the best move. I think it solves the problem, yes, but I think it does so in a not particularly elegant or fun manner. 
Now, over in Legendary Town, Outlaw gets a mixture of passive bonuses. Two of them can give Pistol Shot extra damage based on either Sinister Strike or Between the Eyes usage. One causes Sinister Strike to cycle your damage done, a bit like Encounter's Flow for Mages, actually. And uh, the last, Clarity, will give a um, basically a damage bonus during Adrenaline Rush and uh, gives it a chance to proc for three seconds when you're um, basically just randomly whenever your Slice and Dice is active, which again could be like a nice little speed boost. Overall, though, I'd say the inability to re-roll a bad roll the bones basically simplifies Outlaw a lot, but it still does rely on that roll the bones RNG quite a bit, so I am still kind of mixed on it to be honest with you. It feels a bit more in line with the other specs' simplicity from a gameplay angle, which is either a good thing or a bad thing depending on your taste. Subtlety has a few neat tricks up its sleeve, but it's fundamentally similar. It's still all about aligning Shadow Dance and Symbols of Death windows for Shadow Strike while keeping up a dot, and uh, now, of course, also keeping up Slice and Dice, which is the buff that's been baselined. Now that said, Shadow Dance is a bit different. It's not something you'll be using as much because it's down to having one charge lasting for eight seconds instead of five and having the 15% of Dark Shadow's damage increase be baked into it. Then your dot is also different. It's no longer Nightblade. No, it's actually just Rupture again, which means that it loses the damage increase component the Nightblade brought to the table. Then Find Weakness is actually now a baseline for you. You just have it by default and it applies on any attack from stealth or a critical backstab from behind, and uh, finishers do extra damage as shadow to affected targets. They also then have got a new AoE finisher called Black Powder, which is supposedly an explosive powder, but it kind of looks more like shadow magic based on its animation, but anyway, you've got that for your AoE uh, option. The only notable talent change then is Find Weakness's slot, of course, uh, being opened up and then taken up by Premeditation, which applies 10 seconds of Slice and Dice on the first Shadow Strike after entering Stealth, and uh, that basically just removes the need to press that button for a while. Then Enveloping Shadows gives you a second charge to Shadow Dance for a bit more flexibility, but it feels like Shadow Dance just lines up better with Symbols of Death without it anyway, like just kind of lines up naturally, so uh, that does mean that Sub, like the other Rogue specs, may not have a lot of options in the talent tree, and that could be disappointing to some. We'll have to see how it shakes out, of course. What about the Legendaries then? Well, Legendaries have got a decent impact, but it's nothing too exciting. Finality makes finishers buff your, well, basically a finisher, buff your next finisher by 25%. There's another Lego that gives Shadow Strike and Cheap Shot a follow-up weaker Shadow Strike. There's a third that makes Vanish grant increased damage for 10 seconds, and it fills all your combo points, so that's actually a pretty nice little pace increase in your gameplay. And the last one, for the spec specifics, gives Shadow Strike and Backstab more combo points and damage for two seconds after symbols. So these are basically just pace modifications. They're not humongously transformative, but they are nice to have and will feel better. So overall then, subtlety feels about the same as before, but the longer Shadow Dance does feel a bit better to combo with Symbols of Death, and the specs overall flow is a bit nicer. So that's what's up for them, and I guess the rogues. I actually think Red is like the number one. It's just so well-rounded and has such great talents and really good legendaries too. Humongous thumbs up for it. I also think that Fury is really good. Both it and Red are examples of specs that were pretty good uh, and then just had a few problems solved. They just got better. Then both Frost and Unholy have improved too, which is really nice. As for the rogues, I think they generally remain solid, if a bit unremarkable. I think some people won't like the slice and dice upkeep, though I will say that having it up does feel pretty good, but I guess then if you always have it up, what's the point? Should it just be baseline and something else? Maybe fill that, you know, use five combo points every 40 seconds kind of gameplay niche. Hard to say. Really for me, the only loser is Feral. That's what I would say. I mean, obviously survival, but you know, I almost forgot about that when I was talking about losers because it's, well, so unremarkable and what happened in Shadowlands to it. But for Feral, man, uh, it needed change. Uh, I do think that. And you know, things like changing Sabretooth, that's very good, right? People will be pro that. Heart of the Wild, it's also pretty cool. Berserk's changes, really good as well. But I think the core of the gameplay and the Blood Talons stuff, I mean, really it's Blood Talons, I just don't like it. Now, I will say this, if you like Blood Talons' change, 
then this is just flat out a better, more fun feral. Uh, but for me, it is just a little bit of a, a little bit of a loser, I think. Not really super hype. So there you go. That is essentially the rundown of all that you need to know, right? The sort of the big sort of experiential nuggets of information for every single melee spec in World of Warcraft. So with that, you should be able to guide your decision making a little bit better and generally get a lay of the land. Yeah, let me know though. What are you going to pick? What are you actually excited for? What do you think has got the best changes? Let me know in those comments. Thank you very much for watching today's video. And with that said, I will see you next time.